Welcome to the Watchman Channel. This channel is all about world news and Bible prophecy, pointing to the soon return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I am asking that if you can, to please help to financially support this ministry. If you feel led to pledge any amount of money, it would be extremely helpful and greatly appreciated. There is a PayPal link in the description box and in my pinned comment below. You can also donate using Cash App. My cash tag is dollar sign watchman 1963 thank you all so much for your prayers and support god bless forget politics i've always liked drew barrymore born into hollywood royalty she oozed star power from a very young age do you remember how you got the role in et well they interviewed me for poltergeist first and she said she's not really like the girl who's in the part in the script so, so Kathy Kennedy, the producer of E.T., said, well, maybe she's right for E.T. Drew Barrymore, E.T. Thank you for this award. <laughs> I appreciate it very much. At the age of seven, when most of us were playing hide and go seek, she knew the power of film and how to use the camera for maximum effect. Incredibly talented. But by the way, she still does know how to use the camera. Like when she interviewed trans activist and influencer Dylan Mulvaney yesterday. It's very personal for me in a world where we're all trying to figure out who we're supposed to be. The risk. Yes. The bravery. To oh my gosh. Be. I had no idea how vulnerable I was even willing to get. I think coming outs can be so um, intense. And, you know, I kind of wanted to add some, some humor. It's my lifeline. Now, I, I do think that there was so much that came up this year that I had no idea that I was going to have to figure out in womanhood and, and vulnerable things that I didn't even know were there. Well, Mulvaney is a TikTok star whose series 365 Days of Girlhood became a smash hit. Mulvaney, of course, is not a girl, but a transgender who dresses like Jackie O answering the haters with a syrupy style and a love yourself message, which drove Drew to her knees. Where do you find the strength to keep being the joy? Well, I think having my chosen family and the people that I love to take care of me. I look at someone like you and I can't imagine anybody disliking you. Oh, please. Do you know, do you want to know, ironically, who uh, dislikes me the most sometimes? Who? Myself. Oh, me too. Oh. And, but. That wasn't planned out or anything. Now let's pause for a moment. What does it mean to young women, the scene you just saw play out, that one of the most well-connected and successful women in Hollywood gets on her knees to pay homage to a biological man who makes money advising women on how to be women, how to cope as women? How is this female empowerment? Oh, and note the devious message from Mulvaney about her chosen family. The implicit message here, your actual family probably won't celebrate your gender transition, so to heck with them. Now, how insulting ultimately to women whose real world concerns are much more pragmatic, like paying the mortgage, making sure their kids are safe, that they're learning. And as far as uniquely female challenges from menopause to childbirth to breastfeeding, Mulvaney isn't the place to look for answers here. Now, Democrats like to claim that they have a monopoly on protecting women and girls. Human rights are women's rights and women's rights are human rights once and for all. This is part of that girl power network. This is how we rise up together. I take some, for lack of a better term, badass glee in just saying, women, you know how to get it done. I want women to see that you do not get pushed around. But that is precisely what the rabid forces relentlessly sell the trans culture are doing. I was forced to compete against two biological males all throughout high school. I raced against these athletes over a dozen times, and every single time I lost. This is just not okay, and it's not fair. And, you know, we're dealing with something that's completely out of our control when we're racing, you know, biological males. Um, the fact that that's still happening, that women are still losing to biological males in their own sport, shows why we need more female athletes to speak up about this. 
Okay, well, if you're a female athlete and you have the temerity, like those women did, to complain about having a biological man compete against you, you may just be canceled. This is what happened to a girls' school basketball team in Vermont. Last month, the Christian school forfeited a playoff game because the opposing team had a biological male on the roster. Well, today we learn that the team, for just defaulting on that one game, is now banned from playing in future tournaments. A run in the playoffs ended as quick as it started for the Mid-Vermont Christian School girls basketball team, pulling out of a Division IV state tournament game against the Long Trail School because they didn't want to play against a transgender athlete. MVCS head of school Vicki Fogg telling NBC5 in an email that playing against an opponent with a biological male jeopardizes the fairness of the game and safety of their players, and that allowing biological males to participate in women's sports sets a bad precedent. Drew Barrymore types would probably call them all bigots, when they're really just acting in accordance with their faith and, yes, their truth. Let me ask you about the negativity. How have you dealt with it? And, and what's an approach you take? What's your self-talk? What do you filter? Is this where feminism in 2023 has arrived? For women to be socially accepted today, they need to prostrate themselves to men who identify as women? But this, of course, isn't the first time the left has signaled subservience to left-wing ideology. No justice! Those who wish to, we will now kneel for our moment of silence. There is a new religion that is moving like a tidal wave through every facet of Western culture, shaping and redefining society as it goes. This new religion disguises itself under the guise of compassion and justice, but underneath it is an evil ideology that is not compatible with Christian values. This new religion is called wokeism. Although it has not been organized into any formal religious structure, it has all the functions of religious doctrine. Wokeism has developed its own view of reality and with its own set of values and narratives. Wokeism falsely claims its own version of truth, justice, righteousness, sin, and judgment. The woke mob is trying to create a future utopian society liberated from what they claim to be an evil and oppressive system. The problem with being woke is, it views the world through what man determines to be moral and not what God says. The Bible tells us our hearts are evil, as we read in Jeremiah 17.9. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? The Bible tells us our ways are not God's ways as we read in Isaiah 55, 8, and 9. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. As Christians, we should be woke to the commandment Jesus gave to spread the gospel, as we read in Mark 16, 15. And he said to them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel, to every creature. Time is very short, so snatch as many friends, family, and others from the fire as you can. Jude 1.23 But others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garment defiled by the flesh. As Christians, we should be woke to the fact Jesus is returning very soon. Revelation 22, 20, and 21 He who testifies to these things says, Surely I am coming quickly. Amen. Even so, come Lord Jesus. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. It was bad enough when the kneeling was to Black Lives Matter, a corrupt neo-Marxist organization. But now women are supposed to be willing to give up all the gains they've made in business, in sports, and cheer for biological men taking their spots? And the message isn't just that you have to be okay with biological boys and men taking your opportunities you must be willing to share bathrooms and locker rooms with them as well. Mr. President, this is my 221st day of publicly transitioning. God, and I love you. Do you think states should have a right to ban gender-affirming health care? I don't think any state or anybody should have the right to do that as a moral question and as a legal question. 
you should have every single solitary right, including, including use of the, your gender identity bathrooms in public. Yeah, that's the leader of the free world. And it gets worse. What about those who stepped up to respond to the growing outrage? What's going on in Florida is, as my mother would say, close to sinful. I mean, it's just terrible what they're doing. I mean, what, 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 what are they thinking about here? Now, can you imagine how this looks on the international scene? America is being battered by inflation, banking stresses that he caused. It's bogged down in a proxy war in Ukraine that he started. I mean, in response, obviously. And this is what Biden chooses to focus on? I was a senior in high school, and my dad was dropping me off. I remember about to get out of the car, and I looked to my right, and two well-dressed men in suits kissed each other. And I'll never forget, I turned and looked to my dad. He said, Joey, it's simple. They love each other. It's simple. No, I'm not joking. And by the way, for decades after this epiphany, Biden opposed gay marriage, remember, saying it should be between a man and a woman. Now, this anti-woman woke obsession hasn't just compelled Biden to make stuff up. It's compelled medical schools to do the same. Indiana University School of Medicine is now forcing all students to read lessons that insist that cervical cancer screening is not just for women, but biological men as well. It's that way in order to avoid offending certain patients. Now, you notice they are never worried about offending women who think this is both anti-science and anti-women. They're not worried about that at all. So now, 60 years after the advent of the modern women's rights movement, the left has effectively made women irrelevant. A spot that a young woman could get in college admissions, positions in corporate America, in the military, in sports, and government, can all now be taken by men. And women, you need to affirmatively celebrate this, complain, and again, be ostracized. Well, I have a message to all women watching out there. You who reject the promoters of this new trans patriarchy, never forget. You are the courageous, courageous ones. You are uniquely created by God with biological gifts that a man will never and can never have. Being transgender is at odds with science and God's design, as we read in Genesis 126 and 27. Then God said, Let us make man in our image, according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. Somehow, in some mysterious and wonderful way, the human male and female, in both body and spirit, are the image and likeness of God. Satan hates mankind because we are created in God's image. He is sowing confusion in the minds of our children. And he is busy in these last days devouring those who are not steadfast in the faith, as we read in 1 Peter 5, 8 through 11. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Resist him, steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. But may the God of all grace, who called us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after you have suffered a while, perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. To him be the glory and the dominion forever and ever. Amen. Jesus said, as a sign of his coming and the end of the age, there would be an increase in deception, false Christ who will deceive many, wars and rumors of wars, nation against nation and kingdom against kingdom, famines, pestilences, earthquakes, Christian persecution, apostasy, false prophets, and lawlessness causing the love of many to grow cold. Jesus said all of these signs would come like birth pains. Jesus was likening last day's events to a woman in labor. As the labor progresses, the pains increase in both frequency and intensity until the baby finally comes. As we get closer to Jesus' return, all the signs he gave us as a sign of his coming and the end of the age will become more frequent and more intense. All of these signs are manifesting around the world in our time. U.S. and Russian officials are trading accusations after an American drone collecting intelligence near Ukraine's coast crashed into the Black Sea after a confrontation with Russian fighter jets. The Pentagon says a Russian pilot knocked it out of its normal flight path. Russia denies that, saying the drone was headed toward its airspace. David Martin has more. U.S. drones frequently fly surveillance missions over the Black Sea. 
among other things, to monitor the fighting in Ukraine. Russian fighters usually come out to intercept them, but this time they seem bent on causing harm. A Russian jet approached from the rear, dumping fuel. U.S. officials believe the pilot meant to come up in front of the drone so it would fly into the fuel cloud, but pulled up too soon and clipped the drone's propeller, which is located in the back. John Sullivan was U.S. ambassador to Russia at the start of the war. And this is just a sign of Russia's aggressiveness and lawlessness in pursuit of the special military operation. It happened 75 miles southwest of the Crimean Peninsula, a part of Ukraine seized by Russia. For more than half an hour, two Russian jets made a total of 19 passes on the unarmed drone, popping up in front to blast it with their jet exhaust and trying to drench it with their fuel. On the final pass, the Russian pilot missed his approach. Just bad piloting, one official said. They collided with the aircraft, damaging the propeller, uh, and essentially uh, putting in a situation where it was unflyable and uncontrollable. This was an, an aircraft that was flying in international airspace, intercepted by much faster, much more maneuverable Russian fighter aircraft who were trying to bring it down or force it down. And they're lucky they didn't lose one of their own planes and pilots in doing so. Now the Pentagon wants to recover the wreckage before the Russians get to it, but is operating at a disadvantage since there are no U.S. Navy ships in the Black Sea. The Syrian state-run media agency Sana accused Israel on Sunday morning of carrying out a rare daytime strike against targets in northwestern Syria that injured three soldiers. The news agency called the strike an Israeli act of aggression and cited an unnamed military source that said that at about 7.15 a.m. on Sunday, Israel carried out an aerial attack with bursts of missiles from the direction of northern Lebanon, targeting some sites in the countryside of Tautus and Hama provinces. He added that Syrian air defenses were able to intercept and shoot down some of the missiles. The source added that three army personnel were injured in the attack, which also caused material damages. Video circulating on social media showed a plume of smoke at the site of the attack. Hebrew media site N12 reported that the target included a missile development center where rocket engines are developed and assembled. The report said that the attack was carried out after two conditions were met. Intel regarding the assembly of equipment delivered from Iran was ascertained and there were as few people as possible at the location. The Israel Defense Forces did not respond to the allegations in line with its policy of not commenting on such attacks. This is the second airstrike that Syria has attributed to Israel this month. Last week, Syria said Israel carried out an airstrike on the Aleppo International Airport, shutting it down for several days. The Bible tells us there are four possible prophecies on the verge of finding fulfillment. Isaiah 17:1, in which Damascus, Syria will be destroyed in a single night. Jeremiah 49, the prophecy of Alam, which could infer an Israeli attack upon Iran's nuclear program. Psalm 83, in which the Muslim nations that border Israel will mount an attack on Israel in order to cut them off from being a nation. Ezekiel 38 and 39, known as the War of Gog and Magog. In this prophecy, a coalition of nations led by Russia, Iran, and Turkey will attack Israel in the last days in order to take Israel's wealth. Matthew 24, 6 and 7. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars, See that you are not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet, for nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. Nation is the Greek word ethnos, which means a race, as of the same habit, i.e. a tribe, especially a foreign, non-Jewish one, Gentiles, usually by implication, pagan. What I believe Jesus is saying here is that there have always been wars and rumors of wars. But when you see the same ethnic group fighting the same ethnic group, now pay attention. His return is near. Syria has been devastated by conflict. Millions have died or been displaced since an uprising against the rule of Bashar al-Assad began 12 years ago. Despite their losses, people say they have not abandoned their cause. I lost my house and my little sister in the bombardment of eastern Aleppo. I also lost my leg and was hospitalized for weeks. We were simply asking for the basic human rights, but instead of listening to us, the Syrian regime chose to wipe out the country. The UN estimates more than 400,000 people have been killed since the conflict erupted, with over 13 million fleeing as refugees or becoming internally displaced. They say that despite their desperate situation, 
They remain hopeful for a brighter future for the next generation. The people here prefer to live in these harsh conditions rather than under Assad's rule. We have a saying, we shall perish, but the Syrian regime won't rule us. Family's home gone in seconds, swept away by a swollen river after days of heavy rain. Cyclone Yaku has left a trail of destruction and displaced hundreds of families in northern Peru since making landfall last week. I have nothing. My daughters are left in the street. We need help. We don't have water, food, nothing. Many didn't have time to salvage any belongings before their homes were washed away. When I stepped out of my house, the whole area was full of smoke from falling land. I went back inside and told my son, get up, the river will sweep us away. We tried to take our clothes, but there was no time. The water swept everything away. The government's declared a state of emergency in 400 districts and issued landslide warnings in nearly 600. President Dina Boluarte visited some of the hardest hit areas as authorities delivered much needed aid. It's sad and painful. Families are trapped in the mud, rice crops are flooded, and you can't even see the path of the river. It's lost. This can't continue. The cyclone is the latest crisis to hit Peru. There have been widespread anti-government protests since Congress removed then-President Pedro Castillo from power in December. But for those who've lost everything as a result of the cyclone, their attention is focused on more immediate problems. We begin with nasty weather on both coasts. In California, more than 30 million people are currently under flood alerts, including many already hit by deadly rain earlier this month. Meanwhile, a nor'easter is dumping wet, heavy snow across New England. More than two feet fell in parts of Massachusetts. The road into this Ventura neighborhood is washed out. The water is nearly as high as the speed limit side and we've been told that the residents on the other side are now using an emergency back road to leave. Another brutal atmospheric river has made a steady march from the northern to the southern part of the state. Nearly 27,000 Californians are under evacuation orders and many do not know when they'll be able to get back home. Relentless rains pounded southern and central California Tuesday flooding roads in Ventura, northwest of Los Angeles, further stressing snow-packed rooftops in the San Bernardino Mountains as a swollen creek forced evacuations in San Luis Obispo County. It's definitely higher than it's ever been in my lifetime. That's after pummeling the state farther north, causing a mudslide that slammed into this house north of Sacramento. The high winds toppled a big rig on a bridge north of San Francisco and farther south caused these huge eucalyptus trees to smash into four buildings in this condo complex. No one was hurt. The tree just fell down and then we got uh, knocked on from the fire department and the police department to evacuate as soon as possible. About 100 people were trapped when floodwaters washed out roads and bridges into Leary County. We did airlift into multiple points across the county. Uh, emergency food rations. The latest storm also delivered another round of rain to communities close to rivers already overflowing. Thousands of residents in the farming town of Pajaro were forced to evacuate in the middle of the night last week after a levee broke. Hundreds have been staying at this full evacuation shelter for five days and still can't go home, as Anais Rodriguez told our Carter Evans. The thing is that they don't let us in, so that's the part that's really frustrating. You don't even know if your home is okay. That's correct. Cyclone Freddy wreaking havoc across parts of Africa, leaving behind a path of death and destruction. More than 100 people killed, hundreds more injured and displaced. The cyclone forming early last month near Indonesia, then quickly accelerating across the Indian Ocean, first making landfall in Madagascar before looping back, slamming the island nation again. Freddie on track to be the world's longest lasting tropical cyclone and one of the strongest storms ever recorded in the southern hemisphere. Freddie's traveled more than 10,000 kilometers. It's generated as much accumulated cyclone energy as 
an average North Atlantic hurricane season. This is one storm. Mozambique, Malawi and Madagascar facing the brunt of the storm. 150 mile per hour winds ripping off roofs, torrential rain submerging homes and devastating landslides washing away entire towns. The relentless rainfall only exacerbating the damage caused by Freddie's first pass through the area. Southern Mozambique receiving more than a year's worth of rainfall in just one month. Madagascar getting three times the monthly average in one week. And we know this cyclone's been churning across that area for about a month now. So the big question, do you think the worst of this storm is finally over? Well, you know, Morgan, meteorologists are saying that the region is not in the clear yet. While the system is weakening, torrential rains followed by massive flooding and strong winds still expected in the coming hours. Psalm 107, 33 and 34. He turns rivers into a wilderness and the water springs into dry ground, a fruitful land into barrenness for the wickedness of those who dwell in it. Roman Gutierrez says he stares at the sky every day in search of signs of rain. He has lost nearly all of his soya bean crops this year due to crippling drought conditions affecting the South American nation. This year we needed 600 millimeters more. That's why we lost all the crops. Most of us rent the land, which makes it difficult to pay rent, but inputs and other items we need. The extreme weather conditions have also caused shortages of grass, grain and water, severely impacting the cattle of many of the farmers in the area. These are the Argentine Pampas, the heart of Argentina's agricultural production, and drought is everywhere to be seen. The drought is having an impact all across Argentina. This is a field of corn and as you can see it's dry and it's already been lost. Producers are telling us that because of the lack of water they have started to notice different types of insects, insects that they tell us they had never seen before in this part of the country. The lack of rain is linked to the La Nina climate phenomenon, a cooling of the equatorial Pacific that cuts rainfall in parts of Argentina. But this time, farmers say the situation is worse than ever. There are insects that we didn't see before, but also people stopped controlling because it wasn't worth fumigating as the crops were lost. We see more insects here because they have nowhere else to eat. Argentina is struggling with a 100% inflation rate in the past year and a shortage of U.S. dollars. Agriculture is a crucial supply of revenue, adding billions of dollars of foreign currency to the central bank. And economists say the severe drought will likely complicate the economic outlook of the country even further. Experts also believe that the political uncertainty of the upcoming presidential elections later this year could increase economic instability in the country. But right now, farmers like Roman Gutierrez are just hoping for a little government assistance and for rain to help him save what is left of his produce. Jesus said a sign of his return would be more frequent and more intense weather as we read in Matthew 24, 7 and 8. And there will be famines, pestilences and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of birth pains. Pestilence is the Greek word loimus, which means a plague. Definition of a plague is any large scale calamity, especially when thought to be sent by God. God has used plagues in the form of extreme weather in the past and will again in the future. The seventh plague on Egypt was hail. Don't forget about the famine in Joseph's time. One of the biggest is the flood in the book of Genesis. In the future, during the seven year tribulation, God will once again use extreme weather in the form of pestilence as judgment. In Revelation 16:21, God uses hailstones weighing 100 pounds each, and great hail from heaven fell upon men, each hailstone about the weight of a talent. Men blaspheme God because of the plague of the hail, since that plague was exceedingly great. In Revelation 16:8 and 9, God uses scorching heat. Then the fourth angel poured out his bowl on the sun and power was given to him to scorch men with fire, and men were scorched with great heat, and they blasphemed the name of God who has power over these plagues, and they did not repent and give him glory. So when Jesus Christ warns us that just before his second coming, there will be famines, pestilences, and earthquakes in various places, you had better believe that these occurrences are a sign from God and that he is about to intervene. Jesus, speaking to his disciples about the signs of his coming and the end of the age, declares this in Matthew 24, 12. And because lawlessness will be increased, the love of many will grow cold. The Bible tells us lawlessness is the violation of God's commandments, as we read in 1 John 3, 4. Whoever commits sin also commits lawlessness, and sin is lawlessness. Sin will be so rampant 
and so commonplace in the last days that the love people once had for one another, for many, will be non-existent. In this prophecy, Jesus Christ is describing an ongoing breakdown in the relationship with God. And since people's love for God is waning, it will be evident in the way people treat one another as well. A symptom may be that the love toward other people is decreasing, but the real cause is that the relationship with God is cooling off. This is what we are witnessing in our world today. Turn now to the deadly shooting at a Jehovah's Witness Center in Germany. A gunman opening fire and killing at least seven people. Marcus Moore is on the scene in Hamburg with the latest and good morning to you, Marcus. Rebecca, good morning. This is the door police broke through to interrupt that vicious attack on innocent people. And we have learned this morning that the victims range in ages from 30 to 60 years old. This morning, seven people are dead and several wounded after a mass shooting at a Jehovah's Witness Center in northern Germany. Police saying the gunman who took his own life at the scene acted alone and is a former member of the congregation. Those killed include four men, two women, and an unborn child. Terrorism is not considered a motive. The chaos started around 9 p.m. Thursday night after a city alert of shots fired. A special police force happened to be in the area when the shooting happened and quickly entered the building to evacuate people, potentially preventing more casualties. Hamburg police say the investigations into the background to the crime are ongoing. A murder spree sprawling from Birmingham's East Lake neighborhood to Ragland in St. Clair County, leaving four people dead. Police didn't have to look far to find Daniel Watson, the person now behind bars for the shootings. This individual turned himself in. He walked up to law enforcement. It was the end to a deadly night that police say began just after midnight on Tuesday when St. Clair deputies began getting calls for a disturbance on Ivy Drive in Ragland. When deputies got there, they found 37-year-old Amber Manning dead in the driveway of a home and 62-year-old Timothy Davidson shot inside a home. Davidson was flown to UAB hospital but later died as well. People in the community telling us Manny was shot as she tried to help Davidson, who was her neighbor. Around 6 a.m., a Leeds police officer says Daniel Watson approached him, telling him he was the one who shot Manning and Davidson in Ragland and that he had shot two people in Birmingham. We didn't receive any previous calls. The sad and unfortunate um, part about that area is that community suffers so much with gunshots that even if someone in the neighborhood heard gunshots, unless it was an alarming amount, they may have just considered that to be just a normal um, thing for that area. When BPD officers responded to this home on 8th Avenue South in the East Lake neighborhood, they found a man and a woman dead there. From us just speaking with the other agencies involved, we don't believe this is random. Detectives now working to figure out why it all happened while determining what Watson will be charged with. The Apostle Paul in his epistle to Timothy tells us in the last days society will be in a total immoral meltdown. 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 5. But know this, that in the last days perilous times will come. For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers, without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power, and from such people turn away. Tonight, American car thieves capping a banner year. Just got my car back from being stolen. Leaving a staggering number of drivers stalled. This is what they did to my car. A new report shows car thefts nationwide are surging, topping 1 million last year. In Chicago, up 55%. You feel helpless. Thieves stole Teresa McKinney's car in June. Investigators found it a day later only to have the steering wheel fall off. My car has not been right since it's been stolen. It don't drive right. It don't do nothing right. Police pushing steering wheel locks and parking in secured areas. As for what's driving this, researchers say on the list of most stolen makes, two have become frequent targets. Y'all be aware of this new Kia and Hyundai break-in challenge. On TikTok, tricks for hot wiring Hyundais and Kias have become a viral trend. Matthew 7, 21 through 23. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven. But he who does the will of my Father in heaven, 
Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, and done many wonders in your name? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. At that time, those who practice lawlessness will be cast into the blazing furnace, as we read in Matthew 13, 41, and 42. The Son of Man will send out his angels, and they will gather out of his kingdom all things that offend, and those who practice lawlessness, and will cast them into the furnace of fire. There will be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Those who are covered by the righteousness of Christ will shine like the sun, as we read in Matthew 13, 43. Then the righteous will shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their Father. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. Christ will have the ultimate victory and will eliminate lawlessness forever. The signs of Jesus' soon return are so strong now, and the evidence is so clear that any person willing to accept the truth can see that the end of the world as we know it is near. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But God demonstrates His own love toward us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. These are the ABCs of salvation. A. Admit that you're a sinner. B. Believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried, and God raised him from the dead. C. Call upon the name of the Lord, and you will be saved. Jesus paid the price for mankind's sin. He has provided a way to spend eternity with Him and the Father. All you have to do is believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved. God has already done all the work. All you must do is receive, in faith, the salvation God offers. Fully trust in Jesus alone as the payment for your sins. Believe in Him and you will not perish. God is offering you salvation as a gift. All you have to do is accept it. Jesus is the only way of salvation. That being said, we must repent of our sins. While repentance is not a work that earns salvation, repentance unto salvation does result in works. It is impossible to truly and fully change your mind without that causing a change in action. In the Bible, repentance results in a change in behavior. Repentance, properly defined, is necessary for salvation. Biblical repentance is changing your mind about Jesus Christ and turning to God in faith for salvation. Turning from sin is not the definition of repentance, but it is one of the results of genuine faith-based repentance towards the Lord Jesus Christ. One day, Jesus is coming. You may be at church. You may be at work. You may be asleep. God grant that you will be ready when he makes his personal appearance. My God, what if his appearance occurs on a Sunday morning? My prophetic word to you this morning is get ready, get ready! is short. Call upon the name of Jesus today.